here I am, a third of the way there, with the uh, <coughs> hardest third still to come, I think. Um, I've come up from down here where you can see this is me using my uh, nifty little handheld camera and if you can see a saddle just up ahead yes that's right that kind of U I'm headed for the top of that and over there and um, <coughs> a little bit of blue sky around but uh, I think the clouds are closing in a little bit so you can see the outline of that U I'm going headed for the right hand side of that so better press on see you later the fog's coming in and it's uh, still heading over this uh, thing the shoulder Check out this bad boy. And check out the route ahead. Yep. Not much to see there. Bye. So when I left the Chia hut, I climbed <coughs> about uh, 200 meters um, up up into this little valley to try and get to the coal there um, and remember this was marked as a summer route um, and though I saw like some evidence of uh, the path on the way up, um, essentially the moment I start wa started walking, there was already too much snow for any kind of marked path to be any kind of useful. I mean, by marked, I mean they have a tendency to kind of put stones on top of boulders, and that stone sitting on top of a boulder is a uh, should let you know that there's a path there. So once the snow gets to kind of ankle deep, that starts to become less useful. Once the snow gets to kind of knee deep, then it's largely not very useful at all. And so I largely battled kind of freestyle up towards this coal. And as it got, I got closer, um, it started to become clear that it was getting deeper, uh, the snow and so I was kind of having to wade through kind of knee to thigh deep or you know boulder fields where one moment you're kind of just ankle deep in snow the next moment you're maybe kind of <laughs> like waist deep in snow and you have to kind of stop and dig yourself out again find some like ground to stand on and continue forward um, so I did manage to get to the coal and um, the snow there was obviously the deepest and there were quite a lot of times when I found myself like lying, well crawling using my ice axe and walking stick kind of as to support my arms on the basis that I'd sink into the snow less and I could actually move faster like that. Um, so, and, and that really wasn't that ideal to be honest. Um, but I got through to the other side um, and walked. And, and it didn't, you know, straight away it didn't get better on the other side. There was. <coughs> It's quite unfortunate when you're kind of measuring how fast you're going by or, or kind of working out how fast you want to go by like pointing at a boulder 25 metres ahead and saying, come on Tim, you can get to that boulder, you can get to that boulder. Oh look, it's only 10 metres ahead now. As you kind of like sink in once again up to your waist and wonder whether crawling is appropriate. Um, 
Yeah, the snow. Uh, it was. I mean, the good thing was that there was no obvious dangers, um, apart from you know, being on a summer route when no one knew where I was uh, in autumn. Uh, there weren't any like actually obvious dangers, um, so there were no kind of large drops that I particularly noticed, um, or um, lakes that weren't marked on the map that were, I could like accidentally tread on or something, or, I don't know, I don't think there was anything that I should particularly have been nerved about. No, the thing I was most scared about, to be honest, was being caught on the mountain overnight, because when you're making seriously slow progress and it's 2pm, and you'll kind of barely feel like you're making any progress at all, um, then it can get a bit scary. <clears throat> Though, to be fair, I mean, at 2pm I thought, I'm going to be lucky if I'm back by 6, and I got back at quarter to 6. Um, so, I, w I mean, it was a very long day of hiking. So I started at 8 a.m. and I arrived at quarter to six. Um, I'm not actually sure what time zone that's in, but the point is it's still kind of about seven and f three quarter hours, whichever way you look at it, um, and a very long day. Uh, especially considering that the actual distance is kind of between seven and nine kilometers. I mean, my map and the Signpost here seem to disagree. My map and signpost generally tend to disagree. Not on the direction, just on the distance. The signposts generally tend to estimate kind of one or two kilometres more than my map. So maybe I'm reading something wrong. Um, but yeah, so it was between seven and nine kilometres, but it's definitely the, the slowest seven or nine kilometres I've ever done. Um, and it was just amazing to get back into kind of ankle deep snow where I could just stomp through it and actually be somewhere different soon. So I've come down into Nello, the Nello, I don't know what it's called, um, the valley with the Nello Stuganen. Uh, Nello is the name of one of the mountains upon the, the side. Um, and it's quite a remarkable valley, really, because basically it's a it's a glacial <coughs> valley, um, and you have peaks kind of that are about. I mean, I'm at about nine hundred meters here, um, so times that by three to get feet. Um, it's about eighteen thousand feet, maybe. No, eighteen hundred feet. Oh, whatever. You work it out. Um, and up on the side of the the valley you have kind of peaks that are about a thousand meters prominent from the valley so there are peaks on the side of the valley that are kind of 1900 meters and we're at about 900 meters so it's quite impressive especially when you I was first walking down through the mist um, and cloud into this kind of dark twilightish valley to see these kind of massive peaks towering above the, the hut itself. It's quite impressive. Whew. So I'm just cooking breakfast and then heading off down the valley. I have about four days of full walking left um, and I need to get back to Obisco. So I'm walking down to the Vistas Valley and hopefully making some progress up there before hopefully camping and then pressing on and on and on and on. It's going to be a lot of pushing myself for distance now. Um, so no longer are we on any kind of food rationing. It's om nom 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 nom. Uh, it might be fuel rationing still. But I've been making sure to leave my meals that need the least fuel till last. Um, yeah. So that's pretty much it. I will see you sometime this evening, I guess. Bye.